Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is ZKT Chaotic. Today I will be reading Purple Hyacinth episode 109 to 110. Whew, this is gonna be a rough one. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh man, I'm dreading. I'm dreading, I'm dreading. Okay, let's go. Okay, so that's the doctor. They finally arrived. It's blocked. The door. Five. Five seconds. We won't make it. Throw it now. Four. Oh my gosh. Three. Two. Beep beep. Purple Heisen. Episode 109. <laughs> Karen. Good morning, detective. How do you feel? Horrible. How long was was I out? An entire day, actually. And it is 10 in the morning on January 24th, if you want to know. What? <laughs> Careful. You passed out before the doctor got here. I haven't woken up since. I can't believe it. Damn it. Everyone must be looking for me. So much for convincing them I'm not Loon. This is bad, Kieran. This is really bad. Hold up, detective. You won't be able to get very far in your state, nor should you try. But I have to let them know that I'm alive. Kim and Bill. Oh, poor Kim. She... She recognized me, Kieran. I'm sure of it. She knows it's, it was me. Probably will too. They must think I'm dead. They could tell my uncle, Herman. Your uncle already knew, Laura. What? I called him the night you passed out. You did what? Let me explain. Your uncle is a chief of the APD and he would have been looking for you. I knew you most likely be unconscious for a while and nothing would have explained your sudden absence without raising suspicions. Nothing except a car accident, like you said yourself. We needed not only a car to crash, but also some, some kind of police report and the accident and... And I even got you a medical record of your brief passage to the hospital before being discharged due to minor injuries. But uh, how? You're right. I could have done it with my contacts, but not in such a short, short amount of time. And not without leaving a trail that would link us together. Too many people to involve and not enough I could trust in the Phantom Scythe. So. So you contacted my uncle to get those done instead? Precisely. Your uncle was in the best position to help me out. And he did so brilliantly. But, but how? What did you tell him? And you, you, you're the Purple Heisen. How could you risk it, risk contacting him? What does he know now? I didn't, I didn't want to involve him in the, in this and endanger him more than I already do. Like I said, your uncle knew more than you thought already. <sighs> you are loon, aren't you? You are Lauren's partner. How did you know? I've suspected she's one of them for a long time now, but I've never had anything to prove it until tonight. I saw you as you were escaping and recognized her. Where is she now? Is she safe? She is, but I will not reveal our, lo our location. She's seen by a doctor and is now sleeping. She has several injuries, but none are life-threatening. 
I'm calling you because I need your help. And who are you? And what have you told him? For now, he only knows that we are partners. Considering the rumors on Loon, he might suspect that I have ties with the Phantom Scythe. But he doesn't know who I am. You're going to you're going have to find out what he knows. I can't believe it. He knew about me? He's never told me or asked me anything. And you, you exposed yourself to the chief of police. What if he a he's able to track you down? Not sure if you are overestimating your uncle's abilities or underestimating mine to hide. Either way, congratulations. You've officially been hit by a car two nights ago. <sighs> Please tell me this is alcohol. Your uncle and I had a few hours to organize everything through phone calls. Officially, you are going to visit your godfather. The hit and run happened in the 12th district around 11 p.m. Which means way before officers were called in to help with the evacuation of the factory area. You stayed in the Strathcona Hospital's emergency room from midnight until about 2 a.m. And you were th and were then brought home by Maid Lucy. Anyone who tried to come and see you at home was turned down. Ugh. You really figured out, figured everything out. I always do. Come on, it's worth celebrating for a second that you're alive. Well, at least I like to celebrate it. It's water, by the way. I don't even know what to say. Thank you for doing all of this for me. He put himself in danger for me, and it is not the first time. He did all this despite being injured himself. Uh, uh. Would have been a shame if our tragic death was ruined by Herman, wondering why you didn't come in on Monday. Still, I have to talk to Kim and Will. I don't even know if they're okay. I left Kim and on the roof and Will was with Lucas and... <sighs> Kim and Will are both fine. I made sure to avoid them and their questions during my shift yesterday. Randall's at the McIntyre Hospital, but he hasn't woken up. And you have to rest before anything, Lauren. You're lucky nothing was fatal, but you pushed your body to its limits and the recovery will be long. Wait, did you just say you went to work yesterday? Your injuries are just as bad as mine. How did you even hide the wounds on your face? I got some assassin makeup tricks to help conceal some. And mostly hid myself in the archives room for four hours. Nothing different from what I do every day. And you, you were being half to death less than a week ago. How? Ah, I'm the purple hyacinth. A little explosion can't kill me. Come, I'll help you get to the phone. Dring, Sergeant Kim Liddell. Dring, dring, dring. Thank you for attending the mandatory counseling session following the events at the factory. So let's start with a few questions. Have you been to therapy before, Miss Liddell? Yes. All right, we're gonna read this part. I'm so excited. Purple Hyacinth, episode 110. I'm, I had a delightful evening at Duke's Canterbury's reception yesterday. Your Majesty. T You're right. It was a very interesting party. Lots of prominent attendees and some choice gossip about their trade deals with the South. I don't think they're a threat to your treaties with our friends in Siren yet. And they're growing a little... 
ambitious. <gasps> Is that lady? I see that imp impertinent old man refused to learn. If he weren't funding half our army, I would have thrown him in the tower already. There's something else, my queen. Hmm. They mentioned partnering commercially with Viscount Redcliffe. And they aren't the only ones. Redcliffe seems unusually popular in the upper spheres, and he's well-liked among the people. Perhaps it is time for us to get to know him better. He's throwing his annual ball soon. Would you like me to attend? Forgive me, your majesty, but will it be, will it, will it still be held Consider, considering? Oh, yes, it will. Thank you, Neira. Excellent work. You've been most useful to me. <laughs> At your service, my queen. Mommy, mommy! Look what I caught in the garden! Isn't it so pretty? Just like you, mommy. <laughs> Congratulations, Arthur. It is truly beautiful fine. Murphle menela menelaus are a very rare species. Murphle menelaus? Will you come watch the other butterflies with me? Another time, my dear. I have a meeting to attend with your father. But perhaps Lady Nera can take you. Uh, oh, uh, okay. Do you want to come with me, Miss Nera? <laughs> of course. It would be my pleasure, my little prince. I see you've built quite the charming home. Yes, but it hasn't moved much since I caught it. I think it looks sad. What do you think? It's missing Miss Nera. It's freedom, little prince. As we were grimly reminded last night, the threat posed by the Phantom Scythe is more real now than ever. We have good reasons to believe the weapons and nitroglycerin extracted from the factory are not the only ones they've smuggled into the capital. Any news from the spy master? He doubled our ranks, your majesty. The new agents were personally selected by the spy master and myself. With the help of the chief Sinclair, some of them are now successfully undercover within the Phantom Scythe. And we expect reports from them shortly. We have no more time to waste waiting on your spy's right hand. Half measures won't be enough. What do you suggest, your majesty? From now on, the lower districts, especially the South Shore, will be placed under strict curfew and locked down within out, within out a barricades to make sure fa no phantom scythe, phantom sneaks past. I want the APD patrol tripled and anyone suspicious brought in for thorough interrogation. Those Phantom Scythe monsters have never pretended civility with us. I agree with Her Majesty, the Queen. Why should we treat them better than the animals they are? We should spare no measures. All the nobilities is terrified right now. What about Radcliffe's ball? Shouldn't it be safer to cancel it for the time being? And give the Phantoms exactly what they want? We shall not show fear in the eyes of our enemies. Besides, Redcliffe's annual reception is one of the biggest fundraisers of the year, and the Viscount has publicly promised to fund promised to fund the pitiful excuse of a hospital on the South Shore. Isn't that what the low lives our right hand so passionately defends have been begging for? Forgive me, Your Majesty, but I doubt that concentrating the new drastic measures onto the lower district, while sparing the nobles any discomfort is what the people want. 
The hospital isn't the only thing falling apart on the South Shore. Ooh, she's unfazed. The revolution the Phantom Scythe promised 10 years ago is on our doorstep now, and unless things really do change, they will strike one way or the other. And not only the Phantom Scythe, but your own people. <sighs> and will you be joining them, Lord Rims Rismel, since you, our suggestion seems to so revolting to you? You've corresponded with their leader in the past. Why should we believe you aren't still? Yes, those letters that the Queen Elizabeth found in your office were damning. I'm surprised you're still allowed in court. Perhaps it was a mistake to like, let you return. I never corresponded with the leader, Duke Farnham. What a suiting name, Farnham, for that guy. The leader sent us warnings before the Allendale tragedy, warnings which you all decided to ignore. A mistake which cost us the life of late King Edward and more than 200 citizens. Then what do you suggest, right hand? <sighs> A parley. We will never negotiate with criminals. Outraging! If that doesn't show where his true al allegiance lie. <sighs> Silence. Let him speak. Since its inception, the Phantom Scythe requests have been in the interest of our people. Improving their working conditions, access to education, and health, we all know that the Phantoms are not the first group to make such demands. Yes, some things have improved since King Edward's rule, but far from enough. Most of you have never seen, never ever seen what the South Shore looks like have never seen the beggars and the dying children on its streets. There are beggars in every kingdom, yet none of our neighbors are showing them with presents. And you seem to forget that one of their demands is to put the heads of all of us higher-born on spikes, not to mention overthrow their majesties and destroy the very structure of our society. We are now on the verge of a violent revolution. The state's coffers are not as empty as they were under King Edward. And a civil war will drain them much quicker than entertaining the Phantom Sight's request. I am suggesting a ceasefire, while we can still avoid more bloodshed. Do you hear yourself? This is absolutely insane. We can't possibly do this. Enough, all of you. I'm tired of your bickering. Lord Rismel's proposition is one to consider, but in the meantime, the measures proposed by the Queen shall be made effective immediately. Duke Farnham, Farnham, prepare the army and ensure its readiness in case of need. Tell Chief Sinclair I want all district captains to make a public announcement tomorrow at noon. Make sure the measures are also on the first page of all major newspapers. Man, that was a lot of arguing. Oh man, oh man. Okay, so they're gonna increase the, I guess the curfew and have all the APD out to enforce those curfew in the South Shore. But of course we have Rizmel suggesting that everyone just cease fire, throw the flag, just so we don't have any more casualties. But everyone on the other end are just like, oh, you just, they're just afraid. Like, they're just afraid of having their heads on pipe, like on the, on the spike, spikes. I don't know how to say it. I'm kind of derping right now. But, oh my gosh. Of course, you can tell the rich lords in there, or whatever they are, want to, want to keep themselves alive. They don't really care for the people. Meanwhile, the other people are trying to protect the citizen, you know? But, I don't know. It is at their doorstep. They have to act fast and they have to know what to do because if they are poking the bear, the bear are going to snap, you know? 
<laughs> but it's getting really interesting. All right, guys, if you guys enjoy the way I read this, feel free to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, drop some comments, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye!